performance industry, as we see it now, is, uh, is awash with innovation at the minute, but uh, mostly driven, I think, by the regulatory landscape. So the regulatory landscape, specifically with the, the Second Payment Services Directive, has actually generated a lot of interest and a lot of new technology entrants trying to challenge the incumbents. In payments, I, I believe the economics will change drastically and therefore the business has to change. We make money today on a commodity service, which is accepting payments. I think that will, the expectation will be that's done for free. We have to add value elsewhere. Um, I think the perfect place for payments to add value is in increasing sales. I think payments have always been about increasing sales. And so we have to go back to that value proposition. Fraud, PSD2, data, it's always about a big disruption, but there's not a real big disruption within the payment industry. We're just making this industry more efficient and handle it in a better way. We're all fascinated by the new technology, but the businesses are all to do with regulatory change. And for the coming year, this means GDPR, PSD2, SCA, the transition to open banking. I mean, several people have talked about how big that's going to be. So for the coming year, I think we'll be very focused on those areas. I think it's, it's going seamless, cashless. Uh, quite important for us to, to make sure that the checkout is quite short. Uh, earlier it used to be like 10 page checkout and now the pop-up is just on the same page. Customer prefer to have even quicker checkout than before. One way that I would also like to see the technology going is that we could understand those behaviors and tailor with technology and with cookies or different ways of tracking to understand when the customer is shifting a device, understand why, and then tailor the experience in a, in a way that it's going to improve the whole core customer journey. Because we see that already happening, the shift from one device to another, but we do, it's very hard to understand why and how you can tailor it on the technology now. Current challenges that I see facing um, our industry as a marketplace would be um, working with customers' data. I think that's going to be one of the largest challenges in the next uh, year, year and a half, will be being compliant and being compliant with users' data, making sure that you have the right processes in place so that you're compliant in terms of managing user data and managing the different um, requests that could come in from your customers that you may have. From a product side, it's, it's really about putting together all the, let's say, the interaction points, call it omnichannel, call it whatever you want, but it's like wherever people would like to purchase, we should be able to provide a solution, a secure solution. Uh, on the merchant side, we should be able to provide the data and, um, let's say, the tools to manage their payments, chargebacks, uh, fraud, all those things. If you don't have the overarching view and capabilities to bring those channels together so regardless how your customers wish to interact with you, you will not be able to truly offer an omnichannel proposition. Data is the new oil and data is also the basis for identity. Identity will therefore be the capital wealth of our next uh, iteration of, of, of the industry. And anything that has to do with maintaining privacy around identity, uh, the ability to permission and accept or initiate a transaction or, or a value exchange is going to be much more important. 90% of this industry doesn't know even the data on which to build the models yet. So first start to create a good insight in the data, then trying to model it and then build the AI part. It's going step by step. Do you want to, to have a different marketing? Do you want to simply have a higher conversion rate? Do you want to play with personas, to, ha to present yourself differently? Really, what is the goal? Maybe even on a high level, is it just your goal to increase revenue or to be more efficient? And based on that, we can look at what to look for in the data, what to do with it. I think that at some point, those payment service providers will need to involve to allow also a layer of the company that is using them to experiment on the, on the interface and the schemes that they provide. Innovation looks like to something that is solving a real problem. Whether it is going to be uh, integrating APIs in order to enable a seamless experience. So solving a real problem and, and helping businesses to uh, either comply with the regulation or uh, become more sticky, because that's what you're looking at. Uh, I think that's what innovation looks like. And that's not related to any specific technology. Disruption. 
it's, it feels like what everybody loves. And it's nice, you know, it gives a good, you know, like a sort of a, um, a vibe of, okay, we're going to change the world. I mean, and, and, that, and that's, that's nice. It's a good uh, motor for, for change. Um, although sometimes I think it's a bit overused, about like, okay, we, we just call everything disruption. I think the real disruption is really about, again, what I said, doing all the various parts in a customer journey right. Uh, it's not about the great innovation that will change the world, not about the silver bullet. It's so much variety. It's been, do I go to this or do I go to that? And it's been a real tension, so, okay, and that's a wonderful thing. So I think it's offered a lot of value to people who are just wrestling with this change in the industry, trying to analyze what's going on, try to frame a response so that they don't make mistakes, they're not spending money in the wrong, the wrong ways. So anything that helps share information, helps build a collaborative environment and helps bring innovation into the sector, I'm really happy to support it. So it's been a great couple of days.